But with Omicron, they've had a knee-jerk reaction before the evidence has come in. And they've said that in the media. That if we wait until the evidence comes in, it would be too late. So in other words, they've taken a bet, they've taken a gamble, they've taken a hunch. And, and this is problematic because the media have whipped people up into a frenzy of fear about a virus that the majority of people will be able to get through. So I want to talk about um, the vaccines and the vaccine passports and about the current debate in our society in terms of establishing vaccine passports and the possibility of making vaccinations an obligation upon people. Now, never would I have thought that Revelations chapter 13 would ever have been relevant in my lifetime. But this is what Revelations chapter 13 says, reading from verse 16. It says, also it, ca also it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell who does not have the mark of the beast? It goes on, it goes on. The name of the beast, or the number of its name, this calls for wisdom. Let anyone with understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a person. Its number is 666. Now, I want to be clear that I... I'm amazed that I now live in a world where that seems to be a relevant verse to quote. If you had asked me four years ago, would that passage have ever been relevant in my work at Speaker's Corner, I would have dismissed it out of hand. But here I am seeing the parallels between what it says in Revelations and what our society is doing in talking about making the vaccine compulsory and making people have vaccine passports. They're spooky, those parallels. In Italy, you cannot go into certain places, restaurants, theatres, stadiums, nightclubs, bars, without being fully vaccinated. In Austria, they're talking about making the vaccine a obligation upon people. Now, I want to be clear, I'm not saying that the vaccine is the mark of the beast. I want to be clear about that. I am not making that argument. And I think it is completely irresponsible of Christians to tell people that they should not take the vaccine. Unless you're a health professional and you can make a medical argument. It needs to be down to individual choice where a person chooses whether the vaccine is appropriate for them given their risk factors. Yes? I don't think I've ever seen... Yeah, it's a great question. And, and I, I would say to, to the question, I'm just going to repeat your question for the microphone. It's why the backlash? Because we've had other vaccines come out in the past and there hasn't been this backlash. And I would say that social media and uh, scaremongering and the fact that it is so new and so rushed and so rushed i'm going to take make some more points and then i'll take a question and and the fact that it's all happened so quickly has been the reason why there's been the backlash that we have now i want to press on with my presentation and then i'll take another question bro right people have got to make their own choice but i do think that what we've seen in our modern world is a an example of how the beast will convince the world to take his mark look at how people have been shepherded to comply with the state so freely 
So now we know that the Antichrist, when he comes, will simply present something so horrible to the people that the people willingly take the mark of the beast and willingly go along with the loss of their freedoms. And I think we've seen how these things parallel. I think discourse about the vaccine is leading to pressure on the unvaccinated. That we are seeing pressured build in our society against those who, for their personal reasons, haven't chosen to take the vaccine. And that has already led in Austria and Germany to obligatory invasive medical treatment. The loss of the autonomy over your body dictated by the state. And the creation of a medical apartheid in Italy in which the vaccinated have more rights than the unvaccinated. I thought we lived in a liberal democracy. Oh, how wrong I am. We've seen that refusing, we've seen pressure that those who refuse the vaccine should be refused treatment within the NHS. And I want to say to you that if you're one of those people making that argument, be weary of the slippery slope that you put society on. Because it's a very short bridge to go from you can't go to the NHS because you didn't take the vaccine to saying that because you're obese and diabetic or because you smoke and if you got cancer or because you were drunk and gashed your head open on the curb that you can't receive NHS treatment. It's a very dangerous slippery slope. It's the thin end of the wedge. And we've seen thin ends of the wedge before. Uh, Liberalising divorce in the worst cases has led to divorce on demand. So slippery slopes do exist. Thin end of the wedges often lead to the thick end of the wedge. Face masks have not worked. All the way through the pandemic, Scotland has maintained face masks as obligatory. But the number of cases of COVID have not diminished vis-a-vis -vis England where face masks were not always obligatory. COVID passports do not work. Australia has had the most restrictive rights of entitlement to enter Australasia of any country in the world. You could not enter Australia unless you were double vaccinated. And yet Omicron has still arrived in Australia. So clearly having restrictions, saying that you can't do this or that unless you're double vaccinated, has not stopped Omicron from arriving in Australia. Passports do not work. Furthermore, the rules that we are now living by in England and Scotland are confusing. You have to wear a face mask and be double vaccinated to enter a theatre or a nightclub, but you can go to a restaurant without a face mask and without being double vaccinated. What are we saying? Are we saying that people that go to theatres and nightclubs don't also go to restaurants? The rules are completely confused and they do not work. So the question is, what should we have done? And the reality is that retrospect is a bitch. It's always easier to speak in retrospect. And I accept that a critique from retrospect is a poor critique politically. But what we should have done if we could rewind the clock and do it all again is all that money 
that we spent on paying people to stay at home. Those trillions of pounds we should have poured into the NHS and said to people, just go about your lives as normal and just continually poured the money into the NHS, building up its capacity, recruiting staff from aboard, buying oxygen, creating extra beds, training up new staff, and because the economy would have kept running, people would be able to fund the NHS. But right now, what have we achieved? We've crippled the economy, we've brought the NHS to its knees, and Omicron and the virus has still taken away all your liberties. What have we won for all that we have sacrificed? Nothing. We have won nothing. Still tens of thousands of people have died. All we have done is slowed down the inevitable. We haven't stopped it at all. Furthermore, what should we do now? We should do what we should have been doing, and that is to fund the NHS properly, to fund it so that it can deal with the plight that we face, rather than asking the NHS to do increasingly more with the same budget. We need to raise up the money that we put into the NHS. I want to point out to you, all of you, that are putting your faith in the vaccines, that one year ago you were promised that if you took the vaccines, your freedoms would be given back to you. Where are your freedoms? Nowhere. Nowhere. People who have taken the vaccines are still getting ill. People, are, people who have taken the vaccines, fully vaccinated, third jab, are still becoming ill. Cancer patients are not being seen because we've prioritised giving people a booster jab. What is the point of a 24-year-old healthy man or woman, because men and women do exist, receiving a vaccine when a 60-year-old with a lump that they've just found on their testicles or on their breasts not being and receiving immediate treatment for cancer. Now I want to be clear that the debate around COVID and the debate around this entire issue by those who object to the government policy is being framed incorrectly and un unhelpfully because the loudest voices in that movement are conspiratorial mythicists. We are framing the debate incorrectly. It shouldn't be framed around medical conspiracies. The idea that the vaccine is about making people infertile. It's a totally unprovable claim. It's unhelpful and it turns people off the real argument. It shouldn't be based upon theological conspiracies. That this is the end times and that this is the mark of the beast. That is unhelpful and it distracts people from the real argument. It shouldn't be framed along the lines of political conspiracies. The idea that they're trying to shovel in Marxism through the back door. Ladies and gentlemen, the choice that faces our society is the choice that we always make between a freedom and security. Just like there is an exchange between money and time, there is an exchange between security and freedom. 
the more security you have, the less freedom you have. The more freedom you have, the less security you have. And those are the terms with which we should argue our case against the government policy and against government direction. The freedoms of English society were won over centuries of battle against kings and elites. And those freedoms are being lost in decades. We, a generation of people who have never had to fight for freedom, have lost the value of freedom. And we must rediscover it because right now we are in a battle for freedom. Liberal freedoms that we have grown up with, liberal freedoms that we have taken for granted. And it is on that basis and that basis alone that we should oppose the passports, that we should oppose the idea of obligatory vaccinations for you and your children. Furthermore, thank you. Furthermore, I want to say to all of you that conspiracies are not helpful to the argument. They turn off the vast majority of people. I also want to say that conspiracy theories are not good for your mental health. You will waste time, energy and resources on conspiracy theories that will distract you from the real issues. And if you are a Christian, I want to say to you this, because I see that Christians are very much at the front of this fight to maintain our freedoms. I went to the protest yesterday that the media did not tell you about. Tens of thousands of people were there and the media gave it no coverage because the media is lying to you. But everywhere I looked, I saw Christians, Christian iconography, Christian messages, Christian preachers. And I want to applaud all of those Christians for being at the front of the battle for freedom, just like they were in Hong Kong against the communists. But now that you Christians have found your political muscle, let me say to you, don't lose it. Fight the real issues that the church should be fighting for, like the persecuted church, our brothers and sisters in Nigeria who are being killed in their tens of thousands by an Islamic Jihad, for our brothers and sisters in Pakistan who are being treated as second-class citizens by Muslims in a religious apartheid. Fight for the battle for the unborn. Fight against abortion. These are the real issues that you should be fighting, not fighting conspiracies that cannot be proven. Any questions? Okay, so the question is, what are the conspiracies? Conspiracies that I've heard. That the vaccine is designed to make people infertile or to change the genetic makeup of human beings. The reality is, ladies and gentlemen, viruses always change the genetic makeup of human beings. It's the nature of viruses. Other conspiracies that this whole agenda is about pushing a technocracy upon us. Now I accept that every good political activist never wastes a crisis. And there are groups of people with political agendas 
who are using this crisis to push their political agenda. The solution to that is to push your own. We should be pushing for more freedom in our society, not less. Consider the freedoms that you have lost. Your right to speak freely is being curtailed. Your right to associate freely is being curtailed. Your right to move freely is being curtailed. And now they're talking about the right to decide what medical treatment you receive and where you can trade and spend your free time. Too many freedoms are at stake and you must rise up against this crumbling of the freedoms that we have enjoyed in our society. Any other questions? No. Brothers and sisters, this is exactly what I mean. With respect, the questioner says, don't forget there is a conspiracy. People are being affected by the vaccine. Yes, people are being affected by the vaccine. And I am quite certain that when those stats do eventually surface, like they should, it would change the nature of the debate. Because I'm quite sure that in uh, a medical um, testing of vaccines, in a controlled test, the number of fatalities that have happened because of the vaccine in this untested way would never be acceptable in a controlled test. In a controlled test, let's just make up a number. Five people of adversely affected in a controlled group of 30 or a controlled group of 100. It would never be accepted to roll that vaccine out until they had dealt with it. But we rolled out this vaccine in an uncontrolled manner, in a rushed manner. And it is impossible to see what the long-term effects are because we haven't done a long-term test. There are, there, it is possible there's long-term effects. And what is happening, and this is what you all need to be aware of, is that the media shepherds us by the information that they give us and the information that they suppress. Like the terrorist attack that happened in Speaker's Corner this year. Suppressed by the media because they don't want to talk about another Islamist attack against a Christian because it doesn't suit their agenda of we all get along like a hippie commune. I don't disagree with what you're saying, but is that not, if you say that to some people, they will say that the attack is bigger school is a conspiracy because it doesn't fit their agenda. So I could say that I think there's a lot of people being ill because of the vaccine that I know about, and it's and then that could be a conspiracy. Lots of people have become ill because of the vaccine. But what percentage of people have become ill, we don't know because those statistics are not freely available. And the question then is, how many of the unvaccinated are becoming ill because they've exacted a democratic choice that they have the right to make not to take the vaccine? Labelling it a conspiracy does not help you win the argument you need to win. If you fight the battle uphill, you're more likely to lose. Every general in every war chooses the landscape that suits their position the best. And is this the same in democratic argument? You need to frame the argument in such a way that it suits your position the best. And the position that we should frame this argument in is about the freedom of the citizen to have control over his own lives. If you frame it as a conspiracy, if you make conspiracy so treasured to you, 
Not only will you lose the argument, but you will lose it for everyone else as well. So even if you do believe in a conspiracy, I beg you to shut up and stop talking about it and frame the argument in the only way that it can be won, which is about freedoms. And, and what I'm saying to you is that the problem with conspiracies is that by definition, a conspiracy can't be proved. By definition, because if you could prove it, it wouldn't be a conspiracy. Sorry? Well, certainly on Omicron, there's an argument there. Because all the way before Omicron, we were talking about, well, going with the evidence, going with the evidence, going with the evidence. But with Omicron, they've had a knee-jerk reaction before the evidence has come in. And they've said that in the media, that if we wait until the evidence comes in, it would be too late. So in other words, they've taken a bet, they've taken a gamble, they've taken a hunch. And, and this is problematic because the media have whipped people up into a frenzy of fear about a virus that the majority of people will be able to get through. It's those with other morbidities and those who are obese and otherwise unhealthy that are genuinely at risk of the virus. But clouding the debate about freedom with arguments about it's created in a Chinese lab. Whether it is or it isn't is irrelevant to the argument about whether you're losing your freedoms or not. And it's a, only this argument, this pushback against the direction our society is running in can only be won if we argue it on the basis of preserving and expanding liberal freedoms. I don't disagree with that, but I just do think that I don't think that anyone who mentions about those issues about the vaccine or about what the government is saying should be called a conspiracist. That's where I disagree. I agree with you about that the we should fight and protect our freedoms, and that should be what the battle should be for. But I do think that I don't think that anybody who's looking and saying some of these things that's going on, why are they, for example, why are they vaccinating kids when they can't catch it, should be called a conspiracist. Children, ca children can catch catch COVID. They can't, they, yeah, but they can't become, very few can become ill. Possibly. Yeah, that's true. Very few of them will become ill. And at the start, they were saying that the children were safe and, you know, younger people Yeah, safe. and now they're talking about vaccinating your kids. Yeah, now, the reality is, guys, what I'm saying is there's nothing wrong with asking hard questions to the government. A conspiracist is not someone who asks a hard question. A conspiracist who says he has, is someone who says, I have, I know what's going on, but I have no evidence to prove it. That is a conspiracist. And people who are claiming that they know everything that is happening and yet can prove nothing, those are the conspiracists. And they are the ones that are going to lose the argument for everybody because they will become the trope that the elites use to simply dismiss a legitimate debate about democratic freedoms. And so, if you believe in a conspiracy, I beg you, shut up. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just asking you to fight this battle on the only terms that it can be won, which is a debate about freedom. Yep. So there's two sides of that. Uh, 
But the main thing that I agree with what you're saying is that you can't just exclusively label members of the public as conspiracy theorists. There's this conspiracy on the government side as well because they can't prove everything they said to us. That's right, exactly. Before they said to us, look, when you get vaccinated, you can't touch the virus, you can't spread it. All of a sudden that's now, a that's a conspiracy. conspiracy. Because as we see now, oh, you can be double vaccinated and have your booster and catch Omicron and spread it. So they couldn't prove that. Yes, we just, you know, so, 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 so what we have to do, like, I, I hear where you're coming from, but what we have to do is like, just expose that like, conspiracy period on both sides. So let me, let me be clear. The, the question, and, and I'm going to wrap up, I'll take one more after this and then I'm going to wrap up. So the, uh, the idea that, that, that uh, no one would deny that we're losing freedoms. Those that argue, those that argue, well, we've got to get the virus under control, are the people that say we need to choose security over freedom. Because the exchange is, the more freedom you hand over, the more security you're given. That's, that's why when you go to sign on for your benefits, you've lost some freedom. Because the government gets to tell you where to go, gets to tell you how to spend your time. But what you get in return for that is a roof over your head and some food in your stomach. There is a trade between security and freedom. And what I am arguing is that we are sacrificing too much freedom regardless of how much security we get in reply the level of security is not worth the value of the freedoms that we're losing and what we need to do is remember the value of the freedom that we had your last question so, so what they're doing now with your point about security is that they're saying okay if you take this vaccine and you allow us you give over your freedoms and you allow us to give you your security, you get to keep a job, right? You can fly out on holiday while other people can't. So what's happening now, what we're slowly seeing is like, uh, let's see a divide between a first class citizen and a second class citizen. Yeah. Right? So your point about you know, their freedoms being taken away is actually giving people a slightly slowly giving slow back to them than you know, when they could be before. So as I said before, they were, they're allowed to go to... Um, Right, so let me, let, let me address your point, bro. Let me address your point. Uh, and my answer to that is that the evidence is already in that even if you're fully vaccinated, you can still spread the virus and you can still get ill. So this idea of discriminating against the unvaccinated on the basis that they can get ill and that they can spread the virus is a fallacious one because Omicron still made it to Australia and only the fully vaccinated can go to Australia. And people who are fully vaccinated, I know someone who's triple jabbed and they still got ill and they still tested positive with COVID. So the reality is that being fully vaccinated doesn't stop the virus from spreading. And I have one more final point to make which I think is the utter kick in the teeth that we've given to NHS workers. Because last year, when they were unvaccinated and treating us all and helping us all, we clapped for them and we cheered for them and we celebrated them. But next year, if, they, if there are those amongst them that choose not to take the vaccine, they're going to lose their job. So they were last year's heroes and they're next year's villains. And that is because they simply choose what medical treatments to receive. And I think that that is absolutely disgraceful way to treat people who work in the NHS. And it's totally wrong. And that, that policy needs to be reversed and those who voted for it should be ashamed. If they could treat you when you had COVID last year and you'd applaud them, why will you villainize them next year? Okay. Guys, I'm done on that topic. I just gotta say, like, fair, the government did, they didn't say that the vaccine was like, completely protected. They gave percentages. They say, like, yeah. A, a percentage. percentage. Absolutely right, yeah. The debate next year is going to become toxic and it's going to become as divisive and it's going to become as horrible as the Brexit debate.
Because in British politics, we've seemed to have lost the ability to disagree agreeably. And that's because of the poison of progressive politics in our society. Progressive politics has removed the ability to disagree agreeably. And it's affected our culture in the worst kinds of ways. That's one of its fruits. Thank you so much for listening, guys. I'm going to stop there.